class. This week we're going to talk a little bit about electronic health records versus MPI or master piece index or indices if it's plural. So first we're going to talk a little bit about documentation itself. So a lot of the times when physicians are told that they need to document better, um, they think that adding more information is key. But in actuality, we want less information, but making it more efficient. So making sure that you include all of the pertinent details to the case, um, including risks and benefits to clinical decisions. A lot of the times when physicians write, they're writing down their clinical decision making for making a specific judgment call. Say, for example, chiropractic, because that's my specialty. A lot of the times when writing um, risk assessments for chiropractic, you say things like there's a chance that through this treatment, they could have bruising or they could have sprains or strains or they could even have fractures in some cases if they have um, really low bone density. But if a physician were to just write that and they didn't include the benefits as well, if something were to occur, like a rib fracture, um, it would be really hard to combat that in a malpractice suit. Including the benefits as well is really beneficial to the provider for protection in their practice. So if they were to say things like, well, while there is a chance of bruising, sprains or strains, or even fractures, in really specific populations like people who have low bone density, the benefits tend to outweigh the risks because it results in uh, better nervous system function, um, better musculoskeletal function, loss of pain, um, being able to perform their jobs better at work, things along those lines. If they include both the risks and benefits, it is beneficial to the providers in protecting them against things like malpractice claims. Along the same lines, they have to include their clinical decision making in their documentation. And it has to be congruent with the patient's condition. So, because this shows that the doctor is being empathetic and is making decisions that make sense for the patient's case. They want the doctor to show that each case for the patient is individual and they don't just treat everybody with that same condition um, exactly the same every time. So say a psychiatrist is seeing a patient and they're having suicidal ideations. If that patient is still having really heavy suicidal ideations and they're in inpatient treatment in a psychiatric facility, if the doctor then discharges them, even though they've documented that they have suicidal ideations, that's not really a clinical decision that's congruent with the patient's condition, right? That doesn't make a lot of sense as to why they would discharge them if they're still having the same problem that they were admitted for. It's also really important to document the patient's knowledge of how they can contribute to their care. What decisions should they be making in their lives to contribute and to what degree is their care their responsibility? Um, for things like chiropractic care, the patient's responsibility is a huge part of them getting better. If they're not willing to do certain exercises outside of the treatment room or to make certain lifestyle changes, the treatment might not be as effective. And they might get upset that the treatment's not as effective, but if they're not doing the work themselves and they know that they're supposed to be doing the work themselves, that's a whole other issue. So documenting whether they're compliant and if they know how compliant they should be and what they should be doing um, is a huge part of making sure that the patient um, is getting the treatment that they need and to the standard that is required. There's a designated record set, which is a group of records that includes the protected health information, all of the billing records, all the insurance information, and also any research that was done to come to clinical decision making. Sometimes doctors will include research articles that 
show certain findings um, in order to back up their cl clinical decision making. Say that same psychiatrist who discharged his suicidal ideations patient. Maybe he has a research article attached to his chart that says that a really a great social circle and social support system is more beneficial than being in an inpatient facility for a certain demographic of patients. Maybe that patient has a really great social support system at home. So having that kind of documentation to back up uh, any clinical decisions and including that in the designated record set is really important. There's also a clinical record or a shadow file, and that's going to contain only copies of the information from the medical record. And it's used primarily by clinicians in office settings, so they might have a shadow file of all of their patients, which includes just copies, not the originals. Because uh, copies aren't part of the legal record, you have to have the originals within the legal record. Macros are these pre-programmed phrases that can be inputted into the medical record, especially when you're using um, electronic systems. So if there's a certain phrase that you have designated for all of your patient charts, say that you have to write in every new patient chart that they received a notice of privacy practices, you can have that phrase inputted and you just click a button and then it adds it to every chart, which is great so that you remember to make that a part of every chart so they're systematic but you have to remember to click that button so that's good because it shows that the doctor is not just adding that to every chart regardless of if they actually got a notice of privacy practices so a medical record is what each doctor is going to have for each patient in their office it's going to be maintained for every individual that's treated whether they're in an inpatient, like long-term care or hospital setting, or in an outpatient private practice or clinic setting. They're considered a hybrid record, so they can be both electronic and paper, um, where they have certain paper documents that patients sign, and then they input that uh, into this electronic system. Medical records are protected from unauthorized disclosure by law, by HIPAA, just like we've talked about before with EHR. There are general guidelines for maintaining these records. Um, they should all be uniform and organized systematically. So every new patient chart should look relatively the same minus the major details. They should be organized systematically. So if a doctor chooses to use a SOAP note format, then they should follow that SOAP note format. There should be that subjective, objective assessment and then plan in that order and following a, a specific order in which they write all of their information for each patient. Any author should be clearly identifiable and usually that's really easy to discern when you're working with an electronic program because normally you have to sign into those things and they electronically stamp whoever was using that chart and if they added anything specifically. All entries should be permanent, so you shouldn't be able to change anything. Um, but if errors do occur, you should be able to strike them out with a single line and initial with a date. You should never completely obliterate in a, a mistake that happened. Um, because if that chart is audited and pulled for something like a malpractice lawsuit, it could look really bad and it could look like you're destroying evidence. Abbreviations should not be used unless they're used by every physician known to man, essentially. The rule of, the rule of thumb is to just generally not use abbreviations because they can be mistaken for a lot of different things. Even when you're abbreviating um, Mr. and Mrs., so if I were to say Ms. Jones, MS, if I were to use that in a veteran's uh, database, like their electronic health record system, that automatically corrects that to multiple sclerosis for MS. So even though I was saying Ms. Jones, 
it corrects that abbreviation to something I didn't mean. So edits should not be made because, like I said, entries should be permanent. But if for some reason the the chart was missing something, you can add an addendum at the bottom, and it should clearly be identified as an addendum. So it should say addendum, and then you should add it whatever information and sign and date it. Usually there's a reason why somebody has to add an addendum, maybe circumstances have changed. Um, so those reasons should also be included in the addendum as to why they were not on the chart previously. And that will also prevent against or help protect against any lawsuits. So this week, uh, your texts and all of your assignments talk a lot about accreditation. For the facility to be accredited, they have to meet certain guidelines depending on the accreditation board that they are trying to be accredited by. And it really depends on the facility and what they want to be accredited in. So say you're a cardiologist, you might want to be accredited by the American Board of Cardi Cardiology, something along those lines. So in order to be accredited, usually you have to have certain things in your documentation, you have to meet certain guidelines every year, and you have to document all of these things in order to be accredited. Do you have to be accredited? No. But if you are accredited, it looks a lot better to patients. So they may choose to go to an accredited um, cardiologist rather than one who is not. So we talked a lot about EHR. Um, a little bit about MPI, because it's, it's a little bit different. So the EHR, in comparison to this MPI, has all of your medical records from all of the doctors you've seen. It's this overarching cloud database with all of your health information. So say you're in a hospital and you've seen a bunch of doctors, it's all in one place in your electronic health record. An MPI, or a Master Patient Index, is going to be a patient database with unique identifiers. Essentially, it's just a place where you have demographic information on each patient. That's it. Nothing else. It's just a database where you keep track of patients. So it doesn't have all of this history and um, patient documentation, all their treatments and their medications. It doesn't have any of that. It's just their name, their demographics, like date of birth, gender, and whatnot. So the one that you're using this week is Dr. Chrono. It's an outpatient EHR system. So you can look at that and play around with it. You'll follow the instructions under the Ahima VLabs tab over on the left hand corner when you're in Blackboard under this course. Um, it'll give you instructions on how to set up your code. Um, make sure that you click on the setup for if you've purchased your code after January of this year, because it's a different link. So you'll go in through that link, you'll sign in, you know, make sure that your code is active, and then you should be able to access Dr. Chrono and follow the instructions within that. There's also an instructions at in your after instruction uh, tab for this week, so make sure you look at that. Let me know if you have any questions. It can be kind of um, there's a lot of steps to setting it up, so let me know if you have trouble with it. I wish I could do this in person, um, but basically just follow all of the instructions that it gives you step by step. Otherwise, it'll get really messy really quickly. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions.